Several years ago, I read a book entitled Grotto Stories from the Heart of Notre Dame. It's a collection of stories written by alumni and friends about the Grotto of Our Lady, located on the campus of Notre Dame University in South Bend, Indiana. They are stories of faith by people who considered Mary to be a key part of their spiritual lives. And they put their trust in her during their years of study at Notre Dame. What's interesting, even remarkable, about this little book is that it clearly reveals that on a campus where football often reigns as king and where higher education is often seen as the pearl of great price, the shrine of Our Lady, the grotto of Our Lady, has been for many the heart of that campus. Like Our Lady's Grotto in Notre Dame, I find this shrine here of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, I find that it's the heart of our basilica. Jesus is the soul, but the shrine of Mary, our Mother of Perpetual Help, is the heart of this basilica. And in the course of one day, it's interesting, it's, it's marvelous to see all the different people that stop at her shrine to pray to her and to write petitions in her behalf. I often imagine her to be like an ordinary kind of household fixture, which we turn to when we need it to turn on or need her to turn on the help, kind of like a light switch when we're asking for the grace that will help us to know, to see what more God wants us to see, or like a water faucet, asking her to turn on that water of refreshment that will help us to feel hope again, or to strengthen us and renew us in God's grace. She is the gentle lady who continually draws us to Jesus, her son. And I believe, as I've said before, that this is what she has been quietly doing for you and for me and for the whole church. She is drawing us back to Christ. 2,000 years ago, when the Holy Spirit spoke to the heart of Mary and a prediction rose from her lips and she said, all generations will call me blessed, I don't think Mary could ever imagine how true this statement would become. Because without a doubt, Mary of Nazareth, the mother of Jesus Christ, is the most celebrated and venerated woman of all history. And I believe, not only believe, but I sense and I experience that we are living in this present time in a whole new wave of Marian devotion. Attention to Mary is more pronounced than ever. Every day, the faithful recite two billion Hail Marys. Last year alone, five million people went to Lourdes, France, and that number doubled to 10 million of those going to Guadalupe in Mexico. Millions more went to Fatima, Chestahova, and Medjugorje and to the American sites in Emmitsburg, Maryland, and the National Shrine in Washington, DC. Maybe you know this already, but more girls are named Mary than any other historical figure. And surprisingly, even popular journalism is attracted to speak about or write about Mary. Time Magazine has featured her twice on the cover and treated their main story on Mary. 
and Life did the same in 1996. One fact that I love is, and I've always cherished this, is that our own previous Pope John Paul II had as his papal motto, totus tuus, which means totally yours. And it was an expression taken from St. Louis de Montfort's famous classical 17th century work, True Devotion to Mary. Another thing that I found fascinating about Pope John Paul II is that on his coat of arms, his papal coat of arms, unlike any other pope that preceded him, he would be the first to actually put a letter on his coat of arms, and he would put the letter M for Mary. Pope John Paul was certainly a primary instrument, a leader in this world who brought the church to a greater consciousness and a greater love for Mary, not only by his encyclicals, but more importantly by his witness of how deeply this woman was a part of his life. So what's behind all this excitement? What is there about the mystery of Mary that inspires this global outpouring of devotion to her, especially at this time in our world? Well, first of all, ever since the Council of Nicaea in 431, Mary was declared to be truly the mother of God. And the church has recognized that Mary is essential if we are going to understand Jesus, her son. The incarnation of Christ is forever linked with Mary. Secondly, the saints of the church witness to a beautiful spiritual truth and that is, the closer you and I get to Mary, the closer we're going to come to Jesus, her son. And that makes complete sense to me. I mean, what mother do you know that doesn't want to acquaint you with her children? Authentic love generates authentic love for Jesus Christ. And finally, the third reason for this exuberant new attention to Mary, and I've said this before, is that there is truly this deep hunger within every person for God. Ultimately, this desire for God is in every human heart. And I believe that Mary's presence Mary's role helps us to bypass the hypnosis of the secular culture. Believe it or not, the heart truly wants God despite what the culture tells us. And Mary is the authentic gateway amid all the false ones in this world. I, I know people who have been lost in sin who have said to me that they feel so at home with Mary because they believe that she knows what an empty heart feels like. 